So today let's take a look at this very interesting and useful donated product, Infiray P2 Pro Thermal Camera. I already tested it off camera because I couldn't resist. Touch the temperature of the world. Here is the manual and some instructions. This is in Chinese, in English. You basically have to search for P2 Pro application and install it in your smartphone and that's it. And here's the thermal camera. It's actually that tiny. It plugs in using a USB-C plug into a smartphone and here is some protective housing for it and this macro lens which actually can go on it magnetically and you can take a thermal macro. You can basically go very close with the camera to the object and take a thermal picture from a very close. And it is a USB cable. I wanted to say a charging cable, but it's actually an extension cable. So instead of plugging it straight into the phone USB port, you can plug it into this and then this one into the phone. I downloaded a P2 Pro application for my phone and let's try to test it. And here is the close-up of the camera and of course it came with a protective film on the lens. And it's actually shiny, it's not transparent in visible light. The lens seems to be made of some material transparent for far infrared but not transparent for visible light. Super tiny, just the lens, the logo, the port and nothing else. Let's plug it in the phone, start the application and it works. Nice. It can be used both like this and like this. It shows a hot spot and the coldest spot. And it also measures the temperature in the center. So you can basically point and measure. Nice. You can choose the palette. This is black and white basically. The brighter the hotter. Iron red. This one seems to be the most familiar one for infrared cameras. This one contains some green, but it's sort of confusing whether the green or the red or the yellow is the hottest. Another rainbow color. Even more rainbows. Red hot. The hottest spot is basically red. Hot iron and the black hot, black and white, the darker, the hotter, basically. But I prefer this one because it's the most familiar. The hottest areas are bright yellow and the coolest ones are dark blue or purple. And of course you can just view it on the display or also you can take pictures. It made a picture and saved it. Or you can take infrared videos and basically have it recorded in a video file and now it's recording as a video and you can stop it and the video is saved. You have the gallery where you have the thermal videos and the pictures. Of course I was already playing with this off camera. I couldn't really resist because it's really super cool. Here is a slider to probably change the sensitivity. High image quality, wide range, or automatic here. Image setting, brightness, contrast. And that's too much contrast. It's sort of overexposed. Now too little contrast. And the brightness. Now it's all too bright. Now all too dark. So let's put it where it was. A lot of settings. I guess some correction for various materials. Because different materials radiate heat a bit differently. You can set the ambient temperature here. Object the distance. 
image flip. No, it's a mirror mode basically. Rotate it 90 degree, 180 degree, 270 degree. A lot of useful settings. The rotation would be useful especially when the camera is on the cable. There is also some button for calibration. It says calibration successful. And this can also display the normal image from the camera of the phone. But of course now the disadvantage is that for objects that are close to it there is a lot of offset because the phone camera is here and the thermal one is here. To use it like this it would be more convenient to put the camera on a cable and position it somewhere here close to the phone camera. You can move it here and you can I guess also take pictures with this in it. Yes, the pictures are saved with the normal camera picture inside of the thermal picture. And the same probably applies to the video. And some settings here, professional thermometry, and it brings probably some extra tools. Point, you can basically point and measure temperature, I guess. Lion, and measuring the temperatures on this lion. Rectangle, and measuring the temperature minimum and maximum and average in the rectangle. A scale here. This is very useful. And deleting all these things. The scale seems to remain. Temperature setting. Burn protection. Temperature units. Of course let's leave it says to Celsius. Temperature alarm. Can trigger alarm if the temperature is outside of some values. And this is the 65 watt charger I fixed. The broken cable is fixed on it and let's try to test it. Let's run it at maximum power almost, 58 watts. And let's make a thermal image of the charger. Nice. And the USB tester. Of course the aluminium heat sink seems to be shiny for infrared. I can see reflections on it. But now let's show the actual video recorded by the camera, instead of just recording the screen of the phone. Of course the disadvantage is that the thermal camera doesn't record audio, so we have to record it using the other camera and edit it in. And here is the thermal image, with the shiny heat sink here on the transistor. Here is the transformer, and of course let's use a sharper pointer than my finger. Here is the transformer which is getting hot. But of course measuring the temperature of this heat sink is tricky because it's shiny and the hottest thing here is the bridge rectifier. The electrolytic capacitor isn't as hot, the inductor in the interference filter also isn't as hot and the capacitor in the interference filter is cool. And the capacitors are sort of warm but not super hot I guess. And the tops of the electrolytic capacitors are shiny so they actually seem cool. But I guess they are the same temperature as the rest of the capacitor. And you can see even the cable is slightly warm. And the tester. Of course when I go too close it's not very focused. So let's try to put the macro lens on. Now it's on and... Now it's actually sharp when I go very close. Here's the synchronous rectifier MOSFET. And of course I accidentally turned off the temperature display. Let's turn it back on. But now finally let's do it properly. I left it baking for about an hour with the cover on because this is actually going to show the operating temperature it runs at. It's loaded at 59 watts and let's remove the cover just before making the image of it. The cover comes off, hopefully without the board. And that's it. I can see 93 degree here. The transformer is about 90. 
you know, the transistor is 984, the bridge rectifier 82, these electrolytic capacitors 77, the main primary smoothing electrolytic capacitor 75 degrees Celsius. This is absolutely baking. It seems like the winding of the transformer is about 94, 95 degrees Celsius almost. You put the macro lens on and the synchronous rectifier transistor is about 82 degree. And the primary switching transistor is about 84 degree, 85. Now let's take a look at the other side of the board. Of course with the power still on. And the hotspot is about 95 degrees Celsius. And this is the snubber network of the primary winding. The diode is in it are the hottest, actually. And this six pin chip, the control chip of the synchronous rectifier MOSFET, is also over 90 degrees Celsius. You can see the eight pin MOSFET and this big control chip, almost the same temperature as the board. And the primary control chip, the same temperature as the board. Here it's under the transformer and this is the snubber network getting quite hot. And of course the camera can also be plugged in the other way and you can make an infrared selfie or thermal selfie then. So that's me, that's my camera, that's some tungsten lamp, a fluorescent light here, some LED light is here, and this is my thermal image now. The temperature readings are probably upside down, but anyway. And of course some more thermal videos. Here is the dog. Here is my laptop and its power supply. Here is my Nixie clock and the plexiglass doesn't seem to be transparent for infrared, so it actually sees the temperature of the box, not the internals. And my hand leaving a heat mark on the floor. And here is a tap with hot and cold water. Opening a freezer. About minus 20 degrees Celsius, coldest spot. Looking at an electric stove. And the oven. A heater and the water pipes going to it. A cold meal taken from a fridge. My super hot chilies, of course. Heating my food in a microwave oven, I set it to roughly two minutes and it's about to finish and also note the cable slightly heated. A storage water heater. The water tank is insulated so the hottest are the pipes and also note the cold pipe. The glass in the window is not transparent for far infrared. Opening the window you can see some trees and the sky and clouds and a couple buildings in the background. Heated by the sun. Some plants and flower pots cold, probably because of evaporative cooling. A car with the wheels the hottest, one more. And cold wheels probably just started driving. A hot bonnet probably was idling a lot. 
And here's my car. The tungsten alarm plate is turned off but still hot. The tires are hot after about 15 minutes of driving and the interior is hot. Because before this it was sitting in the sun. And let's take a look at the engine. And also the front lights are turned off but still hot. The bonnet was probably cold because of the blowing air and no idling. And now let's take a look under the engine cover. And here's the hot engine. My plug-in circadian light with red and yellow LEDs. Some people. A fire. A thermal cat here. And another Nixie clock, this one with TTL chips, not CMOS, and with no cover. So that's this interesting super tiny thermal camera. Big thanks for it and of course there are some links in the description. And if you like my videos please consider subscribing, supporting my channel on Patreon or using the thanks button. And big thanks to all of you who already support me.